recidivism rate over time, uh, then that may uh, help the people who are trying to make the argument for the sentencing reform and make it uh, something that over time has the ability to go. So right now I think that issue is still one that needs more debate, um, but, uh, but there's very strong arguments on both sides and a lot of good arguments that people make. Uh, but right now I think there's a big consensus around the fact that we need to reform our prisons and uh, if we get that done today, it will start helping people and their families today, and that's very important for us to do. So, you know, we're not here to debate, we're here to do, and if we are able to move this forward, we will be doing things that will make our communities safer and that will impact a lot of people's lives and help their families and their communities. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much. Um, I want to go... I want to go to you. Uh, uh, Topeka Sam is here. Uh, you've been a tremendous advocate for women behind bars. Uh, that is apparently a part of this push, trying to make things better for women. Why is that important? Well, thank you. Thank you for having me here today. And thank you for all of you being here. Um, well, I first want to just lift up some of the women who are in the room, who are formerly incarcerated, who are advocates and activists, who are doing the work. So if you would either stand or just raise your hand, because I'd like you to be acknowledged, because it's a tremendous, tremendous feat every day after experiencing trauma to continue to use that trauma to change lives. Thank you. And see, you know, we all have experienced incarceration. Myself being incarcerated in federal prison for three years, I went in with privilege as an educated woman, a woman of color who had two parents who um, were franchise business owners, who went to college, and who made choices. And when I made those choices, I landed up with a, a conspiracy drug charge in federal prison. And when I did, what I saw was what happened to all the women that were impacted, not only by the system, systems that I even contributed to, but systems that people were put into based on poverty and race. And when we look at how we want to really change the system, we really need to start thinking about the people that are most impacted or directly affected. And those are people who are, are experiencing poverty in, this, in, in our country. Now, there are 80% of women who are incarcerated presently who are mothers. 86% of women have experienced sexual trauma, violence, or abuse, and that's just the ones that are actually reported, because everyone doesn't tell and share their stories, right? And then we think about the fact that there is 2.2 million people incarcerated, 4.6 million people who are on pretrial probation or federal supervision, and 70 million people in this country that presently have a criminal conviction. That's one in three adults which means that it's not only the women who stood up and myself who have a criminal conviction or have been impacted by the system, there's a lot more people in this room. And so I think that it's important for all of us to look at what we've been, what we've been doing in this country. What, look at what's happening to our women and our mothers. Look at the things that happened for decades to come. And you know, we don't care about whether or not, you know, it's, it's, it's bipartisan, it's, it's red and blue, it's, it's, it's black or white. You know, our people just want to be free. Well, what happens to women in prison? Women are, are victimized and traumatized over and over again. You know, we've experienced sexual violence and abuse, and then we have to be subjected to having male guards watch us undress just because they want to. It's no threat. You know, we have to ask for pads or tampons when that is a natural thing that we have to go through, right? And then when we have to pay for them, we have to pay for them at the same amount that we do in the street, yet their jobs are only being paid for $5.25 a month. Women who have children have to decide whether or not they're going to call their children at home or buy toothpaste. And how do you expect the country, how do you expect the children not to be impacted in a way when this, these things are happening? I mean, you know, I'm a person that just gets graphic just to give details, and as a woman, myself, I had uterine fibroids, and I had to go through a myomectomy. And the fact that I had to quantify my cycle, which meant that I had to give a, a paper bag of soiled pads to a guard, a male guard, in order for him to see that I was actually using them so that he would issue more. And I had resources. I had family support. And you have to think of the hundreds of thousands of women who don't and how this impacts their children. And though, yes, we, we, it, when you think about public safety and you think about these things, you have to think about this is safety for everyone, every single person. And there are women who will die in prison, women like Alice Johnson who will die 
in prison if she doesn't receive clemency. First time nonviolent offenders. I, I um, have heard your story many times and I, I think you'd have to have a heart of stone not to be moved and I appreciate your great work and you give her applause for her courage <laughs> in trying to bring this forward. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's tough, it's tough. Yeah. Yeah, very, very good. Thank you. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for your courage. Um, uh, Jessica Jackson has said about um, this issue that it's a it's a one to one conversion. When people hear some of the things that are happening with women behind bars, some of the stuff we could fix tomorrow, and we should. So I appreciate that. Uh, I don't know whether to call you secretary, governor, or sir, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, most people don't think this is a fixable problem. Uh, uh, Rick Perry, is this, is this a fixable problem based on your experience in Texas? Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, Van, thank you for being here. Uh, this isn't a Democrat or a Republican issue. This is a, truly a bipartisan issue. And uh, Jared, I want to say to you and to Ivanka, thank you both for taking this on because this, is, this may be the issue of our generation. Uh, and, and we're seeing places across the country and I, I'm going to take it a little step further, and I think you were absolutely correct in picking that uh, narrow uh, victory and that narrow place to focus so, uh, so that we could put the, uh, the, the marker in the ground with a victory, and, and it was a resounding one. Uh, but what I think is the next obvious step, and it's the one that I share with the president, this is real conservatism, and that is criminal justice reform. And that is being able to uh, clearly make sure that people like you never get there, Topeka. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the real victory. Uh, yeah, you made some poor choices. You made a bad choice somewhere in your life, just like all of us have made. Uh, but what we were doing in the state of Texas, we were putting young people in prison for really long periods of time, Mary. Uh, you and Susanna, our neighboring states, and, and you all know what we were doing in the state of Texas. And it was a national issue. It, was, it started here in the White House back in the early 90s uh, with the, with the uh, uh, mandatory sentencing and the things that, by God, we're going to be hard on crime. And we were. But the result was that we were ruining a lot of lives, lives that we didn't have to ruin. And I had a Democrat district judge come to me in the early 2000s and said, hey, Perry, how about this? And talk to me about drug courts. And we passed that in the mid-2000s. Then we had prostitution courts and we had veterans courts. And, and, and we made a real difference. And here was the result, Van, by 2013. In a, sh a relatively short period of time, like six, seven years, we had shut down two prisons and save three billion dollars in the state of Texas. But Secretary Wilkie, here's the more important thing. The lives that were saved. The lives of the people like Topeka that never went because we gave those judges the alternatives to sending them to prison with drug rehab programs, with shock probation, with other alternatives. That's real conservatism. That's what we're about in this country. And we can do this at the federal level States can get out there, and, 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 I, and I know, Mary, you're looking at those kind of, of programs, and Susanna, you over in New Mexico, governors across the country. This is our moment as a country to send a powerful message to the least being able to help themselves in this country. And I want to finish up with this. When this all started back in the early 2000s, General, I had no idea I was going to be indicted. <laughs> but, I, but I was. So this became really personal for me. And the grand jury system became really personal to me about how it's abused. Erica Dockery in Houston, Texas. People like her who basically were threatened with their children being taken away unless they didn't change their testimony, in her case, against her boyfriend. This lady, March the 2nd of this year, in a civil rights case in Houston, Texas, it was clearly shown where the district attorney's office knew about the information that would have 
clearly shown that her boyfriend couldn't have killed that police officer because he was asleep on the couch. But it was kept away from that grand jury. It was kept away. And those types of grand jury reforms in the states, we've got we to be courageous to stand up and do. And Brooke and the Texas Public Policy Foundation, they were on the lead of that in Texas. And I'll promise you, Texas, we're going to be back. We're going to be back in 2019, and we're going to talk about these criminal justice reforms in the states and at the federal level, and America is going to be a better place because of what Jared and Ivanka and people like Van and Topeka and you all have worked on together. I mean, God bless you. I'm in the fight. Let me, I'm going to add for just a minute. Woo! I want to add to, uh, to our great governor, uh, Secretary Perry, my name is Brooke Rollins, uh, as the governor mentioned, but I'll be joining uh, Jared and the Office of American Innovation and Ivanka at the White House in just two weeks' time. Give her it's my great honor. That's well, a big no, deal. That's no, a big no. Deal. The governor told the great story of Texas, and governor, not to correct you, but we're now at eight prisons closed in Texas. But here's what's really, not two, but eight, but see, this is what happens, I know. But more importantly than that, the crime rate in Texas is down 30% since we've done that. Texas's population has doubled, exploded, because of our great job growth, thanks to a great leader. But, but, but as far as the prison reform system goes, we've closed down eight prisons. We have completely changed licensing laws and probation laws. Secretary Costa, I know in Miami, you implemented the first veterans court in the, in the country. These things all make a tremendous difference, and we are a country of second chances, and we are a country of redemption, but we're also a country about public safety, and that's the beautiful thing about what we're trying to do, what we've done in the states, but now at the federal level, what we're working to do is this will help decrease the crime rate and keep our communities safer. So that's an important point too. Thank you. Thank you all well, for having me here. Well, well, well said. Well said. Um, I'll, I'll go, to, go to you uh, last, Jessica. Uh, you and I get a chance to work together on your Cut 50 campaign. Uh, you are a Democrat. Uh, this is not a bipartisan moment o overall, but on this issue, there seems to be a little bit of a bipartisan thaw. Why do you think that Democrats should be working with Republicans on this? And what can we do to make sure that when people do come home, they come home and do well and, uh, and keep this momentum going? Well, first, thanks for having me here and, and giving us this opportunity. I am so excited to see this continued bipartisan effort, an improved bipartisan effort. It feels like it's gaining momentum on this issue. Um, I think for me, it's personal why we need to come together. Uh, when I was 22, my husband was sent to prison. I found myself standing in a courtroom holding our two-month-old daughter, uh, who's now who's quite a bit Anna, bigger. Right and there, the superstar. Introduced the vice president earlier. Uh, but at that time, you know, all I wanted was for my husband to come home. I didn't care if it was a Democrat that passed some policy or a Republican that passed some policy. And I remember once I started to learn about the system and learn how the political division was getting in the way of progress and ripping apart families across the country. All I wanted to do was see people reach across the aisle. We all know somebody who's been impacted by incarceration. Now maybe it's your best friend, maybe it's your husband, maybe it's yourself, maybe it's the guy down the street. We all know somebody who's been impacted by incarceration. We need to focus on empowering people who have been incarcerated to come home and be a part of the solution. Help us figure out how can we actually address some of the underlying reasons people are committing crime, mental illness, drug addiction, poverty. How can we use the voices of those who have been through the system to improve it? So you say, how can we start bringing people home and make our streets safer, which is, should be the goal for all of us? You know, we need to start by looking at what's really broken. When somebody comes home from prison, what is their current experience? In most states, they're given 50 bucks and a bus ticket and, and told, okay, good luck. I hope you do well. And this is after years of being inside of a prison where they probably are not getting the resources or the help they need to rehabilitate. So we need to start by having a real conversation about housing for people coming home from prison about how do we get them jobs. 
and how can we improve their lives as they're coming home and support them in succeeding? Very good. Well, first of all, give this uh, panel a round of applause. Um, I want to say a, a couple of things. Um, this isn't just for show. About half the people in this room were working this morning together in real working sessions trying to figure out how to solve real problems together. We're going to keep working together. And I just want to say, as a, as a proud Democrat and a strong progressive, um, both political parties have core values. For the Republicans, liberty is a core value. Limited government, individual rights, that is a core value that's being, I think, challenged now with too much incarceration. And Democrats have a value around justice and making sure the little folks don't get mistreated. That value is getting run over too. If we can't get together for liberty and justice for all, if we can't get together for liberty and justice for all, something's wrong with this country. We're gonna do something on this issue. We'll fight about everything else, but on this issue, let's get together. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, I have to begin by expressing our sadness and heartbreak over the deadly shooting at Santa Fe High School in Texas just took place moments ago. We're closely monitoring the situation, and federal authorities are coordinating with local officials. This has been going on too long in our country. Too many years, too many decades now. We grieve for the terrible loss of life and send our support and love to everyone affected by this absolutely horrific attack to the students, families, teachers, and personnel at Santa Fe High. We're with you in this tragic hour, and we will be with you forever. My administration is determined to do everything in our power to protect our students, secure our schools, and to keep weapons out of the hands of those who pose a threat to themselves, 
and to others. Everyone must work together at every level of government to keep our children safe. May God heal the injured, and may God comfort the wounded, and may God be with the victims and with the victims' families. Very sad day. Very, very sad. On another note, a very positive note, I'm honored to be here today with so many leaders from across the nation who are committed to the crucial issue of prison reform. Joining us today are several members of my Cabinet who are working diligently on this issue. Attorney General Sessions, Secretary Zinke, Secretary Acosta, Secretary Perry, Secretary DeVos, and Acting Secretary Wilkie, who, by the way, has done an incredible job at the VA, and I'll be informing him in a little while — he doesn't know this yet — that we're going to be putting his name up for nomination to be Secretary of the Veterans Administration. Fantastic. I'm sorry that I ruined the surprise. I'll see you anyway. <laughs> We're very close to getting choice approved. And we had uh, just approved VA accountability, which for almost 40 years they could not get approved. And now, as you know, we just uh, had the House just pass choice, and it's the finer level of choice. We had different levels of choice. Good, bad, okay, and really good. And I think this falls into the really good category. It's going to be a little more expensive, but that's okay. So important. So we are uh, really — we have so many terrific partners working on what we're doing and the reason we're here, prison reform at the state level, including two who are with us today, who have really been active, feel so strongly about it. Governor Mary Fallon and Governor Susan Martinez. You've been fantastic. Okay. Thank you. I also want to thank Van Jones, primarily because he constantly says such nice things about me. <laughs> he did. He did. Every once in a while, right? Every once in a while. He did. He's — hey. He actually has on occasion. Not too often, but I'll tell you what, though, it does feel good. <laughs> and I also want to thank Van — I have to say, Jared Kushner, who has worked so hard on this issue. <laughs> really has. Thank you. We're proud of you. We're proud of you. Prison reform is an issue that unites people from across the political uh, spectrum. It's a, an amazing thing. Our whole nation benefits if former inmates are able to reenter society as productive, law-abiding citizens. Every year, over 620,000 inmates, primarily from state prisons, are released after completing their sentences. For many, really, life outside of the prison is a tremendous struggle. I see it. To find a job, to stay off drugs, to avoid old habits that lead them back to a life of crime, back to prison. Unfortunately, more than one-third of former Federal prison inmates and more than three-quarters of State prisoners will be rearrested again within five years. Nobody wins when former prisoners fail to adjust to life outside or, worse, end up back behind bars. We want former inmates to find a path to success so they can support their families and support their communities. 
Crucial to this effort is helping former prisoners find jobs. As many as three in four individuals released from prison have difficulty finding work. It is not merely a waste of money, but a waste of human capital. Some incredible people to put former inmates on public assistance instead of placing them into a steady job where they can pay taxes, contribute to their country, gain dignity and pride that comes with a career, love waking up in the morning and going to a job, making a lot more money than anything they can do, just really enjoying their life. When we talk about our national program to hire American, this must include helping millions of former inmates get back into the workforce as gainfully employed citizens. At the heart of our prison reform agenda is expanding prison work and the programs so that inmates can re-enter society with the skills to get a job. We also want more mental health services so released inmates can cope with the challenges of life on the outside. And some of those challenges are not easy. We're developing more effective drug treatment so that former prisoners can remain drug-free. Drugs are playing a tremendously big role in our lives, in so many lives, not only having to do with prisoners, but having to do with people that never thought they'd be addicted, that never thought they'd have a problem like this, that are having a really hard time coping. Drugs. We're doing a big, big job on drugs. It is a scourge in this country. In this effort, we are not just absolving prisoners of their central role in their own rehabilitation. There is no substitute for personal accountability, and there is no tolerance for those who take advantage of society's generosity to prey upon the innocent. However, if we want more prisoners to take charge of their own lives, then we should work to give them the tools to stand on their own two feet. They're going to love it. They're going to be great at it. By the way, I have a friend. He hired three people. They were prisoners, pretty hard-line people. I can tell you, two of the three, he said, are unbelievably outstanding. It's been four or five years now. One, he said, is good. But that's life, <laughs> right? That's life. Some are OK. He's OK, not the greatest. But he said two are superstars. They would have never gotten the chance. And one of the things that we are doing is we have created a great economy. The economy is doing fantastically well, even better than you think in the stock market. And the stock market's only being held back a little bit for one reason, although it's up almost 40 percent since Election Day. But they're waiting to see the trade deals. And I can tell you, they're going to be great trade deals. It's going to be great for our country. Our country has been ripped off long enough. And we are making great deals. We're meeting with China today, right after this. We're going to another meeting with China. They've been taking out hundreds of billions of dollars. That's not good for people that get out of prison. And that's not good for people that have never been in prison. That's bad for our country, and we're changing it around. We're changing a lot of those horrible trade deals where they take our jobs, they take our money. We end up with no money, no taxes, no employment. Not a good combination. So the greatest thing we can do, the greatest thing I can do, aside from our programs that they're working so hard on, is create a good work environment where it's hard to get people, because then you take people that come out, you give them a chance, and then like my friend said, they turn out to be outstanding. Jobs are so important. A great economy is so important. And that's what we have, so it makes your job that much easier. As we speak, legislation is working through Congress to reform our federal prisons. My administration strongly supports these efforts, and I urge the House and Senate to get together. And there are a lot of senators, a lot of Congress people that want to get this passed, work out their differences,
get a bill to my desk, I will sign it, and it's going to be strong, it's going to be good, it's going to be what everybody wants. You're all in line, I think. You're all looking for the same thing. So we're going to have something that's going to make you very proud, really very proud. We want, like we do with Veterans Choice, we want the finest, the finest prison reform that you can have anywhere. The finest. That's very important. You make sure you both agree, okay? And, Van, if we're going to go through the process, it's just as hard to go through the process and get a good bill as it is a bad bill. So let's get it right. Will you please make sure, okay? And if you see something you don't like, call me. We'll get it changed before we sign it and have to go through the whole process again, all right? We'll do that. You all know what I mean, right? Working together, we can restore the rule of law, keep dangerous criminals off our streets, and help former inmates get a second chance at life, and a second chance that many of them will really succeed at, if only given the chance. America is a nation that believes in the power of redemption. America is a nation that believes in second chances and third chances in some cases, and I don't know, I guess even fourth chances. I don't know about that. That's where I think you and I may differ. You know, well, We'll go two or three, but maybe we won't go that extra length, okay? It's a little, little more liberal in that way, but that's okay. But we're both well-intentioned, I can tell you that. And America is a nation that believes that the best is always yet to come. I want to, again, thank everyone here today, very special people, very important thing that we're doing. This has never been done in our country. It's never been done. We're going to give people that chance, and we're going to give people a chance of great success. A friend of mine told me that when people get out of prison, they're all excited, and then they go, and they have that stigma they can't get a job. People don't want to hire them. They can't get that chance. And when they do, in many cases, not in all cases, but in many cases, they just turn out to be outstanding, better than other people. So we're going to make our communities more secure, and we're going to make our country more prosperous. And together, we will make America safer and stronger and greater than ever before. And I can tell you, as far as people getting out of prison, it's going to be far, far, far greater than ever before. You're going to get that chance. You're going to, you're going to really make everyone proud, and you're going to be proud of yourself. So it's an honor to be with you. I want to thank everybody for working so hard on this. Uh, it's uh, so many of the people I recognize in the room. This is literally their most important thing. We have so many different things. Economic development, this, this is literally, and I can speak for at least five or six of the people I see, this is literally the most important thing they work on. So it's an honor to have helped, and we're going to get something that's really going to be outstanding. Best, it will be the best of its kind anywhere in the world. That I can promise you. It really will, okay? So God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you.